Hey everyone, what's up? This is Uri for Gorilla Poker. Today we're gonna do a high stakes hand history review. I was going through the 2 plus 2 form, and often you have these long periods where it's PLO and 5 card PLO and stud, high low, whatever, all these high stakes games going on, which I love reading the hand histories, but I don't feel qualified to give good strategic commentary for you guys. And then we have a few hold'em hands, and we have some good months, some bad months, some months have barely any hold'em hands, or they're all heads up hands, which I think less people are interested in. This month has been a good one overall. I was actually just scrolling through and saw some really, really interesting hands, which I'll probably get to in the next video. But then I saw some even more interesting hands. So we have OTB Red Baron back. OTB Red Baron, for those of you who don't know him, he goes by Lorenzo Van Matterhorn from the How I Met Your Mother series on the 2 plus 2 forum. And he was considered the greatest No Limit Hold'em player for a long, 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 long time. Maybe four or five years online, which is like forever. I don't know that he was ever really dethroned. I think he, he kind of phased out of playing high volume. I have heard that the game got tougher for him because once solvers were out and his results were so so much better than everyone else it was like all, everyone who studies is studying his game you might run into a bit of a cat and mouse thing or some stuff isn't working as well possibly he had a crash and burn i i don't know from looking at his game and hands he randomly puts in my guess is, you know, maybe he's kind of moved on to the next phase of his life, but uh, definitely, you know, one, one of the greatest online players of all time. Whoever hasn't read his blog on 2 plus 2, really cool blog, really cool peek back into history. He's doing crazy stuff, 5 bet bluffing, 8 5 suited and, and various things and showing you that he's making money doing it. So you get a peek into the personality of this guy and, and how he, he played as he was coming up. Okay, so we have two OTB Red Baron hands. Number one, zero human, zero cool guy. I have met him live more than once, various live events and cash games, very aggressive online player. Uh, some would say too aggressive. If you asked me, I'd say he's probably a bit too aggressive. But the, the nature of six max no limit hold him is that often ranges are just so tight that you get to be crazy aggressive. So obviously very successful player opens under the gun and OTB Red Baron 3 bets him from the button. Now kind of important to note, OTB Red Baron is for sure going to have a flatting range here and that means that the 3 bet range is going to be a bit polarized. So uh, when you imagine a 3 bet range, in some spots you might imagine a 3 bet range looking like this. Just top whatever percent of hands, and that's it. Want ace jack or jack 10 suit or king 10 suited, I'm not sure. This would be a depolarized 3 bet range. But in this situation, because Red Baron is flatting as well, you tend to want to flat a lot of the medium hands. And then the 3 bet range has hands from all over the bell curve. So presumably the 3 bet range would have all of these hands and these hands and the like anything that's good enough to call tends to be good enough to 3 bet in these positions so so you could have really stuff from all over the place here of course we're going to have a, like always aces kings ace ace king hands like that but but beyond that all these hands are kind of mixed so that's always important to remember uh, when we're looking at the situation and yeah we'll, we'll look at the sim for this hand after so three bets, zero human calls. And we have a Jack 4 3 2 tone board. Jack 4 3 is a very, very good board for OTB Red Baron's range. Because the three and the four are low enough that human doesn't always open threes and fours, and he doesn't always flat them to a three bet. And he doesn't really hit them, you know, as as board pairs with, with his suited hands too often. So it's the kind of board where Red Baron gets to put a ton of pressure. And here, you know, I, I always talk about third pot C bet as a range bet. I wouldn't be shocked if you get to, to bet range for half pot here, like Red Baron is, is betting. Be that as it may, he bets, human calls, and we have the 10 of hearts, and human decides to donk bet fairly large. Very interesting decision. And uh, you need to think about the 10 of hearts as a card kind of a few levels because in order to start donk betting we need the equities in a hand to shift in such a way that you know were you to check otb red baron wouldn't be betting very often 
And whenever we're thinking about ranges in three bet pots, the three better has over pairs. So if aces, kings, and queens are going to stop betting, uh, that's generally a good hint that you should possibly have a donk betting range. Are they going to stop betting on a 10 of hearts? It's not only a flush card. Also brings in pocket tens. Pocket pair you're always continuing. Also brings in jack 10 suited, probably always in your range. So definitely making high pairs slow down a lot. I'm personally not sure i would never have thought to do this which is why we're, we're gonna look at the sim for this hand i can see how the ten of hearts is a very equity shifting card personally i'm curious like would this be same on a different ten like ten of diamonds is it the ten is it on any heart like six of hearts seven of hearts which brings in five six or is this just you know human winging in an aggressive action that doesn't fit the situation which i wouldn't be shocked by because seeing such big turn bets on a card that's not obviously good for humans range i mean it, it is but it's not in like a super duper obvious four four to a straight way is fairly rare so be that as it may human bets red baron calls human shoves the river almost hot Red Baron calls, and we see the showdown with human having top set. So preflop, fine. Flop seems fine. Um, and and then like like I said, Turn and River will need to look at the hand is certainly good enough to bet, but not as good as Red Baron's uh, not flush. And uh, yeah, Red Baron with a not flush, I think. What else are you gonna do after you see bet the other guys donk betting into your nuts? You're not gonna raise him. So Red Baron, no decisions here. And back in the day, if you if if you asked people how is Red Baron so good, they'd point to all these hands, like saying he was running incredibly well. And the truth is, on the one hand, you know who knows, right? Like take a bunch of players, one of them's going to run the best. He's maybe going to have the highest win rate. So was Red Baron just a fluke? I would say by looking at his hands that the answer is definitely definitely not the guy is super super sharp and good and he gets a ton of concepts up until today a lot of high stakes players don't understand a lot of the things that were in red baron's game even four or five years ago okay so let's take a look at this hand quickly in a solver and we'll go to the next one so jack four three two tone like always i have to give the disclaimer these are not ranges that are for the same rake structure but that's not going to matter too much so you can see humans range here actually there are a decent amount of threes and fours why am i saying three and four is good because five sixes sevens eights nines are there more often than threes and fours like these are weighted down a bit so these are the the sets he hits less often and you can see versus a check kind of as i expected over half pot c bet 91 percent of the time again this is an example of how otb red baron is probably being very sharp because you probably see tons of high stakes players these days just betting third pot here and i would say oh range bet but because it's the three and the four and the jack you know you, you just get to go bigger and otb red baron has always been very very sharp with these things so i i don't think he's a fluke like i'll say this a million times but he was probably running above ev fair to say so yeah, we have the bet, pocket jacks is calling so far so good. And you now usually I don't even have turn donk bets in three bet pots as an option, but of course I had to put them as an option here. Interestingly enough, they are getting used. And with pocket jacks, pocket tens, jack ten suited, and uh some flushes for value, and you know, what are you gonna bluff with? Well, five six makes sense. Maybe some of these low pairs or ace king, ace queen sometimes. So interesting kind of rare play so surprising to see uh, someone catch a 15 percent donk bet range but like i said tens a bit unique and here i click control h for those of you who don't know that i get this screen and we get to see which turns you would donk bet on as human and the answer is you know it's not on a flush it's not on a 10 it's on the 10 of hearts or the ace of hearts specifically like these are the two cards where you get to have big long bets so you know I, I was maybe this in human for being too aggressive before but look how sharp this play is technically speaking amazing amazing play for context like if you're studying trying to improve and etc this is so rare it's better to ignore it and not think about it but the thing you need to to think and get wired into your brain is that you know 10 of hearts and nine of hearts are not, not the same card 10 of clubs and nine of clubs are not the same card 
Jack 4-3 is not like Jack 6-5. Like all these situations are different and, and, and this matters to your strategy. So we have a Donk bet, of course, a Red Baron. In my range, he doesn't have that not flush, but of course not flushes will call. And a random 9, Jacks will, of course, shove and Red Baron calls. So yeah, amazing hand, in my, my opinion. Amazingly played hand. Very, you know, it's very rare to see a hand this well played at high stakes. Very impressed. Okay, next one is Capesa, an OTB Red Baron. Now, just judging by me knowing all the other names, plus Capesa limping, I'm guessing he's a recreational. So he limps under the gun, Red Baron ISOs 3.7x from a cutoff, Capesa calls, we get 963 rainbow, check, and Red Baron bets, I guess 75% Tish. We can try to kind of reverse hand read Red Baron. Like, does he have a good hand, a weak hand, value betting, bluffing? Because very often, uh, when a professional is playing against a recreational, they don't play theoretical range bet, etc. necessarily. But there is often a kind of purpose in mind where they're thinking uh, more about their specific hand. And, you know, 963 rainbow, when you see a biggish bet, Usually that's not going to be a bluff against a recreational, right? Like if you're playing against a professional, you're thinking more, okay, what's the correct strategy? What's the correct sizing? Which hands go into that sizing? And you're doing a lot to disguise, disguise your range, disguise your hand. This is something I talk about uh, in one of the courses on the Gorilla Poker website. Uh, the Redline course, there is a chapter about deception. So there is a lot of effort put into poker strategies to be deceptive about uh, what your hand is. But as you're playing against less experienced opponents, this effort becomes less necessary because they won't be able to kind of figure it out in the time frame and with the experience they have. So people get less deceptive. And in this case, you know, when you're not being deceptive, generally big bets on low boards are just some kind of good hand. So probably an overpair. Maybe ace nine, I don't know. Capesa calls, uh, checks on a three. Red Baron bets biggish again. Capesa shoves. Red Baron calls. Now, interesting thing about the shove is if you were to try to think uh, of the range that does this. So I, I have no clue who, who Cape says or even how to pronounce his name necessarily, but you can kind of guess it at player archetypes. So generally, you know, some recreationals would do this with a three, but they won't often have a three. Some will do it with some kind of big combo draw and some will have a, a value threshold. You know, maybe they slow played queens or whatever. Now, showdown here is Cape set ends up having nines for top boat, which is super surprising. I think this is very rare to see. I'll explain why in a second. And, and Red Baron shows kings, which seems super standard on the surface, and we'll examine if, if it actually is. So why is Cape set showing up with nines surprising for me? And the answer is, you know, check shoving top boat feels really unintuitive. Like, why not just check all and slow play? Of course, there are some guys who, you know, rather than playing like this, they're like, oh, I have a really good hand. Let's just get all the money in. But if Capesa were that guy, he would check raise the flop. So I'm, I'm just kind of surprised. Like, you don't check raise the flop, but you do check shove the turn when you improve to this. I, I don't know. I'm surprised. Like, what if Red Baron has a, a straight draw or a flush draw? Why would you want him to fold when you have the, the invulnerable nuts? So I'm surprised to see the play. Like I said, I, I don't know this guy. So he has his reasons. If any of you guys ever do this play, maybe you can try to intuit the reason. I think it's always very important when we're thinking about pe how people play the hand to try to figure out what went through their head. So seeing Red Baron with Kings, you know, very easy to understand what goes through his head with a big flop bet and a big turn back. But Capesa, I'm clueless. So if anyone has an idea, please let me know in the comments. And that being said, yeah, let's take a look. This is something you can actually Equilab. We used to work a lot with these kinds of programs back in the day. So this is obviously not a GTO spot. We're just guesstimating things. And we want to give Capesa a range. So I'm just out there going to give him ace three suited, king three suited. Okay. Of course, I, I don't know his pre-flop range. And then I'm going to give him 4, 5, 7, 5, 7, 8, 10, 8, 10, 7, and maybe 8, 5. So these as diamonds for combo draws. And then I'm going to give him queens. 
I'm going to give him nines because he had nines. I don't know. I, I, I wouldn't have given him nines when analyzing. But yeah, let, let's give him just queens because I, I'm a bit shocked to, to see nines. So I think these are kind of the hands I would put in Capes' range. Now, queens could be jacks whatever some some kind of hand that i think queens is more likely something he's excited about and we want to know what to do with kings so when we're analyzing like this the, the main thing you want to do is understand that we're not going to know the real range but we can look at kind of best case and worst case scenarios now maybe he has a random seven eight and he's a very aggro guy if he's a very aggro guy this is a very easy to play spot and maybe he never has a draw and he always has trips, uh, but then it's also an easy to play spot. So I'm taking kind of a guy, don't know his tendency, so I'm going to give him a reasonable-ish value range and combo draws. Here, Kings needs to call 9k-ish. Let, let's do the, the calculation. Uh, so Kings would need to call, this is to see how often it needs to be good, this much into a pot that's going to be this much so kings needs to be good even round it up to 38 percent of the time that's how often you need to be good okay so we're looking for 38 now of course with this range kings is good because i put in queen queens so you're good 67 it's a snap call and, and i think this is generally the situation here with kings now were we to put in jacks you would be below this with this range and then we'd need to start experimenting and were you to put in queens so roughly in the middle you would have enough equity against the range I put in, but not by a ton. The way we could play with this range, I think with kings is, is not too interesting, but with something like jacks, which we said wouldn't be enough, is we could see what happens when we remove queens and then jumps up to 44. We could see what happens when we tone it down on some of the combo draws, you know, maybe just open-ended straight flush draws and, and trips. And then jacks isn't, isn't good enough. Kings isn't good enough. Suddenly it, it's borderline. If you put just trips in the open-ended straight flush draws, not the gut shot plus flush draw, then things change a bit. But this is just to give you guys a ballpark kind of a way to look at these kind of situations. As you look at more and more of these, you get more experienced and, you know, you see more showdowns and you realize like kings here does run into queens and jacks. That, that's a real thing. So there is a big difference between having kings, queens, jacks. You need to be very focused on the guy you're playing against. Is he tilted? How aggressive is he? Everything that's going on to kind of make these guesstimates. Generally, I, I would think kings would be a snap call here. If I had hands in red baron's shoes, I'd, I would be very unsure what to do. But this analysis kind of shows that it's very hard for tens to, to be a call. You need a very specific range with no over pairs and enough combo draws. Okay. So to... Red Baron hands, always happy to have Red Baron on. Love the guy, one of the greatest of all time for sure. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like and subscribe to the channel. Check out the website. I'll see you guys next time.